is just a quick video to talk about uh, what happens and what you can expect uh, for setting up your Clover dashboard. This is the online portal that allows you to uh, look at uh, your sales information uh, for every device that you have under your merchant ID. So every Clover device you have. If you have more than one merchant ID, you'll actually have two dashboards. Uh, you'll have separate logins or they will be linked. So it depends on how your account was set up. So today we're just going to talk about um, just the, the initial email that you should get uh, from Clover. This email will, will appear in the email address that you have put on the application form. So whatever that happens to be. If you have added a Clover to an existing account, it will be sent to, again, the whatever email is on uh, that file. So if you uh, have set up your account, um, you know, a while back and your email has changed, you'll want to make sure that your advisor updates your email when they send in a Clover um, add-on form for you. So once you've received your email, the first email that comes in is usually sent out when the Clover is shipped to your address. So this will be anywhere from two to five days before the Clover um, device arrives. And you'll see that it comes from Clover support to your email address. And in there, it'll have your name, the name on the account, and it will have two links here. One of them is the link to go to set up your dashboard. And one is a link to confirm your email. So the first thing you want to do, of course, is click that link to confirm your email. And uh, I've already set up the dashboard, so it will take you uh, the first thing that it'll do. It'll actually take you to um, an account uh, setup page and where it'll ask you to set up a password. Once you've set up that password, uh, then you can click on the Clover Web Dashboard. And it will take you to the login page. Okay. Once you've logged in, this is what you should see on your dashboard. So you'll notice that there's no transactions. Uh, in this case, this just happens to be uh, our last week. We didn't have any transactions, but that will be what you'll see on yours as well because you have just gotten your Clover and there won't be any transactions. So this is the transactions that appear on your Clover or are done through your Clover, not necessarily all the uh, accounts and stuff uh, or transactions you've done on your existing um, merchant. So this is your Clover dashboard. Um, just a note, uh, this isn't really rehearsed, so if I jump around a little bit, please forgive me. Uh, the first part of your dashboard, uh, you'll need to notice on the left-hand side a number of different menu options. Reporting, this is where you can see a number of uh, different types of reports, different information that you want to find. Um, my suggestion is that uh, you do, a, you know, play with this screen, uh, click on different items, different ways, uh, go into some more. You go into a full report, you can look at trends, um, select full report for detailed sales information, you know, at the end of your day. There's a number of things that you'll see on the reporting side uh, that you can do, including sales report, uh, the card types. Requested reports are, are reports that you want to do. Maybe you want to do a three-month report. You can do a three-month report. It'll generate it for you and then let you know when it's ready to, to look at the requested reports. Most of them will pop up right away on your dashboard. The reporting side of this is done in near real time. So I say near real time because it may be a few minutes between transactions for the time a transaction is done before it will show up on your sales report. You may have to refresh your screen, but it is something that's not done at the end of a batch. It's not done at the end of the day. It's something that you can look at at any time during the day. 
So whether it's a full sales report or if it's a transaction, you can also go down to transactions where you can look up individual transactions. Um, we haven't had any, so also let me just click on here, last 30 days. So you can see here that there's a number of transactions it has. So you can actually go in to uh, these individual transactions and look up the details of it. So anything, any kind of information that you've put in there, um, who it was done by, if you have employees set up, etc. So again, one of the things I suggest you do when you first get your dashboard is, is have a look through the different um, screens, take a look at all the different areas and, uh, you know, play with uh, the different screens. So here's one where you can do report from the last 30 days. So this is a trends report, gross sales, net sales. Yeah, you can do a full report. So you can go down into a lot more detail. And again, the you'll find that there are some reports that are general in the sense that uh, it's giving you gross information, uh, gross sales, for example. Um, and then there's ones where you want to get even more detailed and so on. So as you get more familiar, I'm not going to go through every single type of report on this particular video. This is just to kind of give you an idea of where things are and where you can find them. Um, again, if you wanted to do the last three months, so there's the last three months. Again, uh, it's not super specific, but you can get day by day totals through this screen. And, uh, you know, as you go through this, you start to look, well, I want to look at, you know, all the sales for credit card, all, all the sales for MasterCard, all the sales for Visa, um, you know, that you can get into with different reports and different information. Um, this is, they have updated the screens and the way they, they uh, look now. You can also go back to the old style if you, um, you know, aren't finding this the, the easiest to work with. You can also go down to your old payments style. I don't know. Hopefully that's going to be available on yours. So here, for example, the last three months, all the Visa card, all the MasterCard, all the debit card transactions, uh, which includes Interact as well. You can do uh, reporting via employees. So here on this particular account, you can see there's reports, there's uh, sales done under uh, two different employees. So you can track what they're selling versus what someone else is selling. And that is true regardless of the number of devices that they've used. As long as they've signed in as that employee, in other words, they use their employee code, uh, they will be able to, you'll be able to track it according to everything that they've sold, regardless of which machine. So if you have a, a, a restaurant or another business where you have more than one a Clover in use, as long as they log in using their code, you'll be able to track their sales no matter what device it is. So this reporting is for every single device, or uh, you can also go back and do sales reports based on individual devices as well too. Uh, so in this case, I've also, each agent has its own device. So it's very easy whether I look by agent name or by device name, it's going to be the same. Okay. Uh, virtual terminal. So one of the things that comes with every uh, Clover dashboard is a virtual terminal. And so that's just the same password as you would use to log in. And you go here, get started. This will allow you to actually take a credit card payment on this dashboard right through here. So in this case, you don't have to, uh, if you have a device out of the office or it's gone on a delivery because you do have the 3G chip uh, and you need to do a credit card sale uh, or maybe the internet goes down um, or even the cellular goes, you know, internet, well, this won't help you if the internet goes down. Um, but let's say the, the cellular goes down or the device itself has a malfunction or something. This does give you the option to do a, uh, what they call a virtual terminal transaction. So you simply type in the dollar amount of what you're doing. You can add notes to it, credit card number, expiration, CVV, and you can run the transaction that way as well. 
So there's no extra charge for having using the virtual terminal um, as opposed to some other virtual terminals that may charge you $15 or $20 a month. They're, this is included with the Clover.